Okay, so my name is Alyssa. Once again, this is going to be vlogling number three. Um, three out of three, luckily. <laughs> um, the title of this one is called Sociolinguistics. Why are you speaking like that? A Dog's Final Chapter. So, uh, this vlogling is going to be similar to the first two in that it is going to be a rap. Um, in the last vlogling, I discussed uh, the concept of phonology. And um, in this vlogling, I will discuss the concept of sociolinguistics. Overall, it was my favorite unit out of the semester because um, unlike the building blocks where you kind of learned exactly that, that there are smaller pieces that make up language, sociolinguistics is kind of an overall um, concept, such as why we speak the way we do, depending on social contexts, like who our audience is, uh, what our social class is, power, prestige, all of those things. I thought it was really interesting um, that we change the way we speak depending on these different factors. So I wanted to discuss that in my final vlogling. So this one kind of goes over um, some of the simpler concepts of sociolinguistics. So I talk about exactly what it is, um, and I also discuss certain variations, such as lexical variation, regional variation, and syntactical variation. And I also discuss um, problems with certain rule of, rules of thumb um, in terms of sociolinguistics, uh, like kind of discuss what the loopholes are, etc. And I also give a lot of examples in this vlogging. I thought it was really nice how in the podcast it was um, kind of included many examples which kind of brought the concept to life for me. So I thought it would be interesting to include that in my vlogging to help other people as well. So I included some um, comparison between Hindi and Urdu, Chaucer's double negatives, and I also included um, Labov's R-drop experiment. And then I closed um, by talking about how much I enjoyed the semester. So hopefully you enjoy the wrap. And here it goes. The building blocks of language are now a thing of the past. In this rap, we'll show you what sociolinguistics is. Get ready for some sass. Because language is mobile and there is definitely a change in the way we speak to people, depending on who or where they are, even though it sounds kind of strange. You're a human and you're incredible because of all the things you can do. When it comes to special talents, there are so many things that are special to you. And communication with other humans is one of those talents. And it is a very important part of what makes humans significant. Their ability to speak, reason, and communicate truly is an art. The thing is, the way you speak depends on who you're talking to. When addressing a professor, you wouldn't say, hey, Dr. O, what it do? Instead, you'd address her with much more respectful and kind salutation. Like, hello, Dr. O, can you please help me with this concept? I would feel so much appreciation. According to Dr. Ohala, language includes its use in social concepts, and here's the thing. Sociolinguistics delves deep into this idea, and learning about it makes sociolinguists want to sing, because they are interested in what makes you change the way you speak, and they are also interested in how language reveals so much more than just what you think. The way you speak can tell someone where you're from, your gender, or your age. There's so much that language can tell us. It frees us instead of keeping us in a cage. It can also tell us a country's national standards and what they think is best because language is also associated with power and prestige. Those politicians never rest. Now we can bring this rap back to its roots. We'll start to talk more about language and dialect to boot. Remember, a dialect is a regional variety of a language. You knew that, dude. Everyone has their own, called an idiolect, and there's also register, too. Register is the language used in a particular context. For example, you wouldn't talk to your grandma the way you chat in a text. Further, if you can understand someone from the other side of the country, then it's mutually intelligible and you're speaking a dialect, unlike if you heard someone from Turkey, because then you'd have absolutely no idea what exactly they were saying. Instead, because it's not mutually intelligible, you know it's different languages you're speaking. Now our last note to cover is the problems with language and dialect. There are problems with this rule of thumb because nothing is ever 100%. Within a single country, there can be numerous boundaries. A geographical boundary between two linguistic forms is called an isoglass, buddy. For example, soda and pop are used interchangeably depending on where you're from. If you're from the East Coast like me, you'd say soda instead of that other one. 
A bundle of these isoglosses is referred to as a dialect boundary, and like everything else in linguistics, these are also fluid and changing. We can take this one step further and discuss what change shift is. It is the coordinated stepwise change in the pronunciation of sounds in a variety of language. Many may think this variation is only phonological, but it certainly is not. There is also lexical variation, which is another concept that is pretty hot. This brings us back to the example of soda versus pop, but can extend to other examples like whether it is a pocketbook or purse. Try asking your mom. Variation can also occur when it comes to morphology and syntax. Whether you're using standard American English or you're from the Ozarks, the way you speak will contrast. These are regional varieties of dialects, but there are also social varieties too. Like in a sociolect, where higher economic status means that your dialect rules. I want to make a point that I brought up before. There is no correct way to speak, and one language isn't better than another. That would make some people sore. Because truly, each language is equal, and there's something from all of them that we can learn. And sociolinguists like to discover why humans speak the way we do, no matter what language they overturn. If there was a way to speak that was better than all of the others, then language would not change over time. But change always occurs, brother. For example, double negatives used to be Chaucer's thing to do. But now we look down on double negatives. They're just something we do not do. Overall, the way we use language is connected to identity and who we are. It is complex and you choose to speak a certain way, depending on if you're talking to someone in your own region or from far. You can choose to speak the standard and seek overt prestige, or you can choose to use non-standard standard language with a subgroup, and that type of prestige would be covert. The last thing we'll discuss is our good old friend Labob and his interesting statement. He went to Sachs, Macy's, and S. Klein and asked them to say fourth floor so you could analyze how they stated. The R's and the words above, and whether the R drop was disassociated or associated with wealth, and as such found that speech style was in fact associated with whether or not you could afford a sax for a pelt. And that is the end of our last and final vlog link. I hope you enjoyed me discussing linguistics in the form of rapping. I sure have loved this class and the way you challenged us to be creative. So I will close this rap about sociolinguistics by saying how much I appreciate it. I have learned so much over the course of this semester, specifically regarding sociolinguistics. I learned that no language is better. We just change the way we speak depending on who we speak to and the situation we're in. And why we do that is up to the audience, status, and power. But staying true to your own idiolect is a surefire way to win. So, that is the end of my vlogging, my last and final one. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.